we don't have chunks of cake or bits of burger floating around our bloodstream. So how do we get the energy from our food to our cells? Two things have to happen before we can make use of our lunch. It needs to be broken down into smaller pieces or digested and then it needs to be absorbed into the bloodstream. Digestion takes place in lots of places along the alimentary canal and absorption happens in the small intestine which is found just after the stomach along the length of the digestive system. To learn more about the digestive system, watch this video and to learn more about absorption, watch this video. In this video, we're going to look at the enzymes involved in digestion in more detail. The large molecules which make up our food, like lipids, proteins and carbohydrates, are too big to be moved into our blood. So, they need to be digested into smaller molecules, by physical processes like chewing and chemically by special proteins called enzymes. Different types of enzymes digest the different types of food, so let's look at the food groups in turn. First, carbohydrates. Foods like rice and pasta are made of carbohydrates. The simplest carbohydrates are sugars, which can be joined into big chains to make complex carbohydrates, like starch. Carbohydrates are digested by carbohydrase enzymes, such as amylase. Amylase is a special type of carbohydrate, which breaks down starch, a big carbohydrate, into smaller molecules. These can then be broken down further into glucose, which is small enough to be moved into the blood. Amylase is found in your saliva, which is where carbohydrates will first start to be broken down chemically, and another amylase is released into the small intestine, from the pancreas, so much further down your digestive system. Now let's look at proteins. Proteins are found in meat, fish, beans and pulses. They are made up of amino acids and are digested by protease enzymes. The protease enzymes break down proteins into amino acids. Protease, called pepsin, breaks down proteins in the stomach, but this doesn't work once the food moves into the small intestine. In the small intestine, the conditions are different, so a different protease, called trypsin, is released into the small intestine from the pancreas for continued protein digestion. What conditions do you think might be different in the small intestine compared to the stomach? Whilst the stomach is very acidic and has a pH of about 2, the small intestine has a higher pH of about 8. Protease enzymes, which work well at pH 2, don't work at pH 8, which is why different protease enzymes are needed in the small intestine. And the last group of food, lipids. Lipids are digested by enzymes called lipases, into glycerol and fatty acids, but it's not an easy job. It requires a process called emulsification to take place first. Emulsification breaks the lipids into smaller droplets. The smaller droplets have a larger surface area for the lipase enzymes to work on. To learn more about bile and emulsification, watch this video. So, to recap, the main enzymes involved in digestion A carbohydrate called amylase is released in the saliva this digests starch into smaller sugars. A protease, called pepsin, digests protein in the stomach. Then a protease, called trypsin, further digests proteins into amino acids in the small intestine. A carbohydrate, called amylase and lipase, are also released into the small intestine from the pancreas. They digest carbohydrates into sugars and lipids into fatty acids and glycerol. These molecules are small enough to be absorbed into the blood. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Comment below if you have any questions. Why not check out our Fuseco app as well? Until next time.